Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Reels, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to make any old laptop new again. Let's get right into it. But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to get access to really awesome discounts on game keys, Microsoft Office licenses, and more specifically, Windows 10 keys, which you know, we use a lot here at the Toasty Bros. If you guys check out the link in the description below, you'll actually see that we have a link to the Windows 10 Pro keys, and you can get 20% off using our code. It's really really easy to do. All you got to do is buy the key and then literally go to the computer or laptop that you want to put it onto. You type it into the Windows activation and then boom, you have Windows 10 Pro activated and installed. We're actually going to be using a Windows 10 key from GVG Mall to update this laptop and you can do it for your brand new gaming PC or maybe a flip PC that you're doing. Whatever you're doing, you can save a lot of money by using GVG Mall and use code TB20 at checkout to save 20%. Now let's get into upgrading this laptop. Okay, so what Matt and I are doing here today is we have this old laptop. This is a Lenovo B50-30, not the Touch Edition. And you can get one of these for honestly around 100 bucks used. They don't even sell them new anymore. They were only $369 new, so they really weren't like a, even really a mid-range laptop by any means. But the idea behind this is that it's a little bit older. You know, it's now a, a few years old. It came with Windows 8 on it originally. And we're going to see if we can kind of spice it up and make it actually a usable laptop again. Because if anybody has ever had any type of older laptop, you know that if it has a hard drive in it and only like four, two to four gigs of RAM, it's going to run insanely slow. Like it's gonna make you wanna pull your hair out. It's gonna take like 20 minutes to boot up and it's just it's not going to be good for getting any type of work done so that's why ssd and ram upgrades are essential to laptops and that's why this video is kind of a broad and can go for any laptop so the first test that we're going to do is without changing any of the hardware stuff so no ssd and no extra four gigs of ram we're going to go ahead and see how long this thing takes to boot up So it took a minute and two seconds, which is actually, you know, that's somewhat impressive for a hard drive because they usually take even longer on laptops that are a little bit older like this. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just hold this power button here down. Okay, you got that on camera. So we're holding it down and it is now off. We're going to go ahead and flip it over and then we're going to upgrade it because no more slow boot times, no more slow game loading times. It's going to be able to do it all. So one thing that most laptop upgrades share in common, and when I say most, I mean almost all of them, is that the first thing you wanna do is remove your battery. And they're all a little bit different and weird in some kind of ways like that, you know? So we now have the battery out. This would also be a good time to, you know, if you need a new battery, go on Amazon and order one because you can usually get them for around $15. So as you guys know here at the Toaster Bros, we're all about trial and error, so, you know, without even looking up a tutorial on how to do this, you can see here that we have pictures of basically like a keyboard, and then over here we have no pictures. A lot of times the keyboard basically means that you're gonna be taking the whole laptop apart. Most laptops have a certain spot for doing upgrades. So I'm assuming that the hard drive is gonna go in this area and then we're gonna have the RAM go somewhere over here. So it should just be two screws to take off. Moment of truth. Ooh, my assumption was spot on. So as you guys can see here, just for like a little you know, some fun facts. So right here we actually have a CMOS, which is really interesting because, you know, it's powered by a battery, but the thing is your battery dies. So your CMOS here is what keeps all your BIOS settings. Here we have a network card. This is basically your wireless card to be able to get on Wi-Fi. Now, if this ever goes bad, really easy to get to as well. And here's our extra RAM slot. This is DIM number two. So we got really lucky. We actually just looked up this model number here and it actually pretty much matches this stuff. 1600 megahertz, so DIM DDR3. That's exactly what this is. So we got you know, very fortunate on the upgrade here, and we'll go ahead and show you guys how to plop some laptop RAM, and I haven't done this in forever, so I might just put it in the hard drive bay. So if you guys are wondering why I changed clothes in this video, well, it's because we got the wrong RAM. So, what we originally had was this here. This is PC3, which is just regular SODIM 1.5 volt RAM. Now, what we needed for the system was PC3L. Very easy to overlook because they look the exact same. The only difference is the PC3L was designed for certain systems to be able to use a little bit less power. I think it's like 1.35 volts rather than 1.5. These systems will not boot up with the 1.5 or just PC3 RAM. So watch out for that. PC3L RAM is a thing. So 
So as you guys can see here, I can already tell we have a two and a half inch laptop drive. So as you guys can see, when picking out a laptop drive, basically this is just a, this is a complete standard. There's really two main standards now. There's three and a half inch drives, which are like the full size desktop hard drives. A laptop will never have one of those. And then there's two and a half inch drive. These are very common for laptops. Now for granted, a lot of new laptops, especially the slim ones, almost any slim laptop will not have a two and a half inch drive anymore. They will either have integrated soldered into the board storage or they'll have something like a m.2 drive all right so now we're just going to go ahead and kind of put it back into this this ghetto tin foil uh packaging that they got going on here because you know it, it it works it shields it right the good news about ssds being in laptops though is the fact that ssds protect against shock damage and any they kind of protect against like certain esd things that a normal magnetic drive couldn't so another nice thing because laptops are meant to be portable and they get dropped often and you end up losing a lot of stuff well with ssds you have a lot less of a chance of that happening all right insert it we are now ready to insert the patient so with pretty much any laptop drive this is your your last fun fact they don't usually have like a regular looking sata cable like sata data and sata power you just have this standard connector that's actually soldered into the motherboard. So you kind of got to do a little push and shove and just weird tactic and see. That's how you know you're in, you know, it can't go anywhere else. So we're in. Okay guys, so now we have the new SSD installed. We now have eight gigs of RAM that's actually working nice and good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this here. One little tip of advice for you guys, one thing I did just have happen was after I installed that stick of RAM in the RAM slot number two or RAM dim number two, Basically, I didn't change anything else around and the laptop wouldn't boot up, okay? It just had like a black screen. So what I did was I swapped the two RAM sticks and then it worked perfect. RAM can be really weird sometimes and sometimes if it's not seated perfectly or just there's all these different reasons, but just as a heads up for laptops and for desktops, if you ever have an issue after you install RAM, try doing things like only having one stick in, like just the new stick and see if that works. And then another really good thing to do is just try reseeding it or try putting it into a different DIMM. And of course we are now installing Windows 10 off of our USB here that we basically just have as a Windows 10 USB because we use it so much. Once we get this installed, we'll be doing Windows 10 Pro. That'll be going on just the SSD and then we will activate it once we get into Windows. So as you guys can see, I actually forgot to stop it and it was like a couple seconds late, but it took around 35 seconds from when I pressed the power button for the laptop being completely shut off to get into Windows all the way. So that's a much better time. We actually cut out about half the time that the hard drive would normally take. I was actually even surprised the hard drive only took like a minute and uh, two seconds or whatever it took. Normally they take even longer, but that's also because it was a fresh install of when we were launching it. As soon as you get anything onto those hard drives, any type of bloatware or anything, you're pretty much screwed. You're gonna be looking at like a anywhere from two to five minutes with most laptops to boot that are a little bit older like this. And also, as you guys can see, if you go to your task manager, really easy way to see if your RAM and everything is working as it should. We now have our eight gigs installed. Of course, it won't show up as eight gigs. It's gonna show up as a little bit less. And you can also check and see, we no longer have a disk that's gonna be maxing out 100% all the time. Take my word for it, when you have a hard drive in a system, it's gonna be maxed out like a lot of the time and it's a huge bottleneck, especially in laptop. So as you guys can see, one of the biggest pluses out of this is the fact that our boot times were cut in half. On many laptops, they will be cut in even bigger numbers than that. You should be able to see anywhere from a 50% to even 80% increase in boot time. Not to mention doing simple things like internet browsing, Photoshop, and just really kind of small applications work really well on things like this because now we have an SSD so the programs launch like 20 times quicker. And then the fact that we have extra RAM helps to where we can actually have multitasking going on like listening to music while using Photoshop or you know, things that you would be doing as a college student or high school student needing just a really decent but cheap laptop. You can pick something up like this for probably under $100 and then upgrade it for also under $100 to make it about the equivalent of a, I would say a modern three to $400 laptop. 
And as I said at the start of this video, this upgrade can be done to almost any laptop. It's a really common thing. So almost all laptops will usually have two RAM slots. Sometimes they have four, but that's usually only the higher end ones. And usually only one slot's taken up. The thing is, on most systems, you want to have dual channel, which means you need two sticks. So that's one thing is they leave that one DIMM open. So then you can go ahead and get another stick of RAM or even two different ones if you're able to, let's say you have one four gig, you're not going to put an eight gig in typically. So you might end up getting two eight gigs to go to 16 if your system allows. It. And then of course for storage they almost always have a way to upgrade. In our case we had a SATA drive so we were able to put just a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. A lot of times they'll have an extra M.2 slot that you can actually insert an extra drive into. And as far as laptop upgradability goes, that's usually pretty much it. I mean, it's like I said, it works for almost every laptop, but they pass that, they usually really don't go much further, unless you're getting like an Alienware. In some cases, they'll have other things that are upgradable, but most of the time we're just talking RAM and storage. So when you're getting a laptop, you gotta keep in mind about what you want to be doing with it. This laptop right here, like I said, would be able to do a lot of things that I guess typical people who don't play a lot of games or people who have another gaming system at home and just want something cheap to get them by at work or school that they're not too worried about maybe getting broken or stolen, well, this is a perfect candidate for that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little educational video here on basically how to upgrade most laptops out there and how to make them, I guess you could say, great again. And we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.